Good morning artists. It's Susan. I am working in the studio today on a little watercolor. I got the opportunity to go to the Cars and Coffee event in Columbia on Saturday and that's hosted by Mike Wolf. Most people know him as the American Picker and he has a um, vintage motorcycle repair shop in Columbia on what he calls Motor Alley. It actually was Motor Alley back in the 1930s and um, World War II shut down the production of consumer cars and so things kind of changed after that when the war was over. But anyway, um, I took a lot of pictures. One was of a vintage VW camper and I don't even know the year of it. I'm going to have to look that up. But um, anyway, I wanted to paint that, but I wanted to paint it in a different scene only because from the vantage point that I got it from, I just didn't think it would make a very pretty painting. So I grabbed a photo um, off the internet that had a VW kind of in the country. So we're gonna use the country background and we're gonna paint our VW. So it's gonna be the collaboration of, um, of, of two different uh, reference photos. So right now, what I have done is I've already prepared my paper and I can link uh, how to do that if you don't already know how to do that. Also, you can buy 300 pound paper or heavier and it doesn't need to be prepped. Or you can paint in your journal or something that's already pre-blocked and we are ready to go. So I have sketched in my basic shapes. I'm not really happy with some of it. I've erased some of it. I've put in more. Um, I really probably put in more detail than I wanna paint. Um, and you can probably see it here. In fact, I probably need to take a picture of that so you can use it for your own reference. But if you want to in your own, um, really just put the basic outlines of, of the landscape, of the car, of um, you know where windows go, things of that nature. Don't get, oh, and also the VW sign in front. You'll make sure you've got that pretty good. Everything else is just gonna be kind of blurry. So let me take a break here and take this photo and then we'll get right back to it. So we're back and um, some of these lines look a little dark and I can go in and erase them best I can. I still want to be able to kind of see where things go. I've even darkened up where the uh, dark of the wheel is on the car, you know, just to kind of help me keep my bearings straight. I did that one really loosely at the top and it's not really connected. Um, yeah, this may be a hot mess, but anyway, um, even if it is, we'll just try to pull it out using everything we know about watercolor. And we're just gonna paint really from light to dark is the main thing. And then also from big shapes to smaller shapes and then we'll do details last. The only thing is this little um, emblem right here is one of the lightest lights and we can't paint it in. We have to paint what it's not. And I'm gonna change the color of the bus behind it. Um, simply because the reference photo, let me pull up that second reference photo. Yeah, that second reference photo is, um, uh, it, it's just one tone on the bus. It doesn't have like a top that's uh, cream and a bottom that's green. The whole thing is green except for the the logo, the bumper, the white walls, and the, the top of the little pop-up here. And uh, maybe maybe the, um, the little, um, curtains in the windows are lighter, but everything else is pretty dark. Um, so we're gonna have to, to work around that. And then this color of the bus is more of a viridian green, which looks like it might even have a little um, burnt sienna in there. So look at your paints. I'm using a set, it's by Dollar Rowney, and it's 36 colors, and you can get this anywhere. I think I got this at Michael's. Um, and it might have even had the Michaels uh, brand on it, but I know they also have it at Hobby Lobby. And um, it's very inexpensive, and it's got a lot of nice colors, and it's perfect for what we're going to use. 
So not only do you have your pans, 36 pans of paint, but you've also got some mixing wells uh, built into the top. And I think it even came with a paintbrush, which I promptly threw away because it just was too cheap. Um, but Hobby Lobby has a good set of watercolor brushes that comes in a package that's under $10. So you wanna pick that up if you go to the store. I'm going to start with a kind of a bigger brush. It's a number six round. And I want to put in the water that is above my mountains or my, my land, basically. And I want to include the tree because we're going to have sky holes back there. And we're just going to add some clear water on there. Now the sky is typically darker and cooler at the top and it gets warmer and lighter as it comes down. So the warmer, lighter cool, uh, color is kind of this greenish color right here. I don't even know if you can see through that. Let me go back to my other picture. Um, you can't really see through that. It's dark, but that just kind of tells me there's a window there. And then it comes out over here. It's in the tree. It's going to get lighter as it goes down. So we need to get darker up here. And then I'm going to switch to a darker, cooler blue, which is probably this one about the third one up from the bottom on the left hand side. You know, I'm even going to put a little bit of um, that pink in there, kind of make it a purpley color. We're going to put that along the, the top here. and just kind of bring it down. Yeah, just like that, that looks good. Now this is gonna dry lighter as watercolor does. So I think that's probably good. It may be a little too dark. We'll see how it goes. We can always pull out some of that color if we need to. We'll see how that, how that works. Now, I'm going to put in the dark of the um, hills in the background that still have trees in them. So they're going to be kind of a blue green. I'll use that same blue I was using in the sky. I'm gonna add some green to it. That's a little too chromatic. I'm gonna add a little bit of pink to it. Maybe a little burnt sienna. Might be a little too blue. Maybe you want to add a little more, maybe a little yellow up here. Get it a little more green. We need to do a lesson on um, atmospheric perspective, but atmospheric perspective only is just some big words that mean as that color 
as things recede, they become um, lighter and cooler as they recede backwards. So we're going back into the distance and it can't be just as yellowy green as it can be because yellow is filtered out in the um, atmosphere. But we're gonna go a little bit yellower on the grass because those trees, not only are they in the far background, but they're uprights. And as light is coming down from above, it's lighting the top of the trees, but it can't light the side of the trees um, except for at an angle, which is a very diffused light. So it can't be that light. But the um, ground that is directly across from that light is going to capture more light and we can see a little bit more of the 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 pale grass in that and then up front it's going to be a lot darker because we've got some more uprights but they're closer. So we're gonna go and then we can even give them more shape because they're up front. Okay. Now, before we work on, let me see if I can close this. Before we can work on that tree, all that background is going to have to be um, dry. We're going to do wet on, on dry. Uh, this technique right here that we've done so far is wet on wet. And you'll notice that it's kind of running and blurring and whatever. And I really like that. Um, I think it gives it a nice soft, um, there's actually a name for that effect on your phone. Is it bokey or something like that? Where it will um, diffuse the background and it'll help you determine what your center of focus is. Now, clearly in our composition, we can see the center of focus is the VW camper. Um, but in other things, you can decide where that, that center of focus is gonna be and everything outside of it, we can make it softer edged and less chromatic in color, like, like more neutral in color. But in our center of focus, we want sharper edges and um, more detail and more chromatic color. And that'll help your viewer know where to look in the painting. So I'm gonna let this dry for a minute and then we'll come back and we'll work on some more. So give me just a few minutes for this to dry. Okay, let's see what we got here. All right, so we've started as far as we could in the background and we're coming forward. And I, um, I was gonna leave that tree to the very end, but now I'm thinking I might want to go ahead and put it in. Let's, let's work um, on a little more of the middle ground here. And it looks like, um, Looks like I really can't tell what's going on there. We're going to put in some green, crazy green. Don't like that color. We'll start with that color, but we are going to add a little red to it.
Okay. Let's live with this for a while and see how we like it. Okay, now this is what we've got. <laughs>